Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Mindless Horror Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. With us is, of course, always Sammy, but today we got special guest star, Rick West. What's going on, guys? How you doing? Rick West, man. I This is a big one. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. fun. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me out to play. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming down to the studio and yeah, of course. talking with us, Midsummer Spring Horror, all that fun you stuff. You bet. I'm ready. I'm ready, man. All right. Look at that. He's eager to get started. I'm eager. He's eager, ready. man. Yeah. Eager. So, first things first, let's 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 throw it out on the bat. Midsummer Screen 2020 tickets just went on sale. Just went on sale. Less than a week ago. Yeah. So, just like, and uh, doing really well. Looks like it's going to be a banner year for us for our fifth anniversary. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're on sale. Uh, Gold Bat's on sale. Everything's on sale. It's midsummerstream.org. Yep. Get your tickets now because yeah. you don't want to miss this convention. It's where this you want to like, This year it's three days too. We did. We did a Friday night preview night for about four hours on Friday night. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was just something that uh, last year we took over the entire convention center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we figured this is our fifth anniversary. So we can't really like expand anymore because we've taken up all the physical space there. Yeah. But for of course years we've talked about adding that third day because everybody says want more time to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, we talked about it last year. But last year really the focus of the growth was on the convention size itself, Definitely. right? And so this year we knew going into this year that we were going to do the third. The third evening, okay. not, not a full day because vendors and everybody are still setting up yeah, on Friday. And so uh, it will be the show floor will be in full operation because that's one of the things we get. We, get, we pack it so much full of um, pack it full of so much programming that people say, oh, God, I didn't get any time to shop. Yeah, of course. You know, now we do have a shitload of people on the shopping floor always. Oh, right. Yeah, of course. But there are always a lot of people afterwards, myself included. They're like, dude, I barely even stepped foot. Yeah. On on the, you know on the floor. That was us the first year. That was, right. We were just panels. It goes panels, like that, and then you're like, yeah. shit, I didn't go to any of the vendors, yeah. or, right? So uh, we really knew that this was going to be a, a time where we would let the vendors really get a head start on everything. Definitely. As well as we are going to have programming. There is going to be some programming that is unique and specific to Friday night. Um, the Hollow Shadows will not be operating. Okay. That's still going to be setting up, but the the front of it will be exposed. Um, so people can take their pictures of the entrance and in, you know in front of it, but they gotta wait till Saturday morning to to go Get in, in there and look to go in. Things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we are gonna have uh, some other things, some some counter programming going on, not as heavily as we do during the regular show. Okay, of course. Because we 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 purposely drive you guys insane with with so much programming, <laughs> right? You have to you have to really make some hard decisions. You don't drive me insane. I, I look forward to everything. There you go. So you gotta make hard decisions. But but yeah. Friday night, really, the focus is is getting people in, getting a lot of lanyards and credentials mm -hmm. uh, distributed. We think that that will help alleviate some of the congestion that we find on Saturday morning. Yeah, of course. You know, that line is, is pretty hairy. You oh, know? it's gone, yeah. We've, we've it, got, it's gone down the bridge, down the stairs, yeah, and all of the street. Basically yeah. to Tijuana, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, it, but we think that the Friday night crowd, that, that will hopefully eliminate some of that. Definitely. Because people will be there Friday night, they'll be hanging out. We're gonna have bars open there, so on the concourse it's gonna be kind of like a big mixer. Okay. For everybody, because okay. um, you can't have midsummer not have booze and mixers. Yeah, no, and everybody everybody, drink and everybody wants yeah. to hang out and oh, talk yeah. horror and, and and what what they're looking forward to for the weekend. Yes, sir. Um, so we we just think that that's going to be a really nice way, because people fly in, people fly in and drive in and they stay in Long Beach and we have people that fly in from out of country. Yeah. yeah and when they land here, they're like, dude. We want to go. go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's start this thing. Yeah. And it sucks if they get here like Friday during the day because then they're like. Okay, here we go. We go. Now yeah. what do we do? There's nothing. So now yeah. there's going to be something for people, even if it's just hanging out, talking to like-minded fans. Yeah, exactly. of course. How cool is that? I mean, I think that that's going to be a really fun way to ease into Midsummer Weekend. No, I think yeah. it's. I think it's when, like, when Midsummer last year ended. Our friends over at Fractured Compass, they literally were talking about. We were just talking. This it's going to probably become a three day thing eventually because it's getting so big yeah. and it's becoming such a big thing. It's becoming, like I said, the Comic Con of, of horror. Yeah. yeah. And um, 
sure enough, when you guys announced that it was going to be three days this um, this this year, I think we were all beyond stoked because uh, coming from like us with YouTube channels, we're we're going panel to panel, you know, interviewing yes. people in the Hall of Shadows and you know playing all this day. Like last year, we had a whole schedule of just podcasts, uh, panels. You know interviews and stuff and then uh we try to squeeze in some shopping in so thankfully last year we did yeah um and i think this friday thing is just a great idea i think that it's going to give us time to kind of just look at the convention yeah. look where everything's at kind of get ahead of things and then buy some stuff that way if we can't get to the vendors on the weekend friday's right. there for just for that yeah and no it's yeah. gonna be fun yeah yeah and yeah. i love that and so like like comic-con does the same thing thursday yeah. they oh well, they now they're out to like wednesday but like they sure. do the all their preview nights they uh, sell stuff and then the convention goes on through the weekend. Sure. I think this is a great idea and I and I could see this going forward. Yeah, I think it's it, it's kind of a well everything that we do is even though this is our fifth year doing midsummer, mm -hmm. um, we, it's a learning curve every year. Yeah, it, there's we learn we, we're constantly learning. If you come to the end of the road and you're not learning anymore, you should probably hang it up because it means you're going to get tired and everybody's going to feel that you're tired yeah. and that you're kind of done. And we are far from done. Mm -hmm. And so we, we know that a lot of people were disappointed when we said, you know, we're going to have this Friday, you know, the people got all set. And then we said, well, it's going to be four hours. And we've gotten a lot of comments, people saying, oh, why is it only four hours or whatever? Yeah. And what people don't realize, the big picture of things, because they're not on the production end of it, mm -hmm. is, you know, these vendors, a lot of them, vending is their secondary job oh, right definitely. so if we're going to say okay well we're going to be open for the entire day on friday well that's another day that we have to rent out the space at the convention center it may or may not be available to mm -hmm. us um the vendors all have to take off yeah. an extra day of work yes and uh, for a lot of them they have to get an extra night of a hotel mm -hmm. of course yeah, so it's a ripple effect so it's cool because they're already there on on thursday and friday setting up and so friday evening you know they open for a few hours they make some cash everybody goes to bed happy right yeah. it, it becomes a whole other animal when you suddenly say well you have to be set up and ready to go by Thursday night yeah yeah you know so it, it does it, it it backs everything up and it, it becomes substantially more expensive you know yeah. putting midsummer on it, it's 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 an expensive endeavor yeah to put midsummer on so everything has a cost associated with it and and it's a lot more than most people think of if they even think of that at all yeah all they think of is oh we love this so much and it's not a negative thing yeah. it's we're, we're happy that people are disappointed because you know it, we, we we want people to be like oh no I want more time at midsummer exactly, right yeah um, but it, it is one of those things where we have to ease into it and we have to see how it goes this year and then of course we talk about further expanding that in, mm -hmm. into you know what our hours are going to be or maybe we'll find that it's just going to be perfect Definitely. Yeah. maybe it'll be like well you know what that was good maybe we can do maybe an, another hour or so next year yeah but but maybe that was just that's the sweet spot yeah you know the first the last couple of years we monkeyed with the size of the aisles and i think last year we landed on a perfect aisle size yeah and so you kind of adjust you test and adjust as you go and so this is our test and adjust for friday night yeah this of course year. no and, and i think it's going to be successful i think it works perfect for me because well I, I what i do is i'm a custodian so over the summer we go we switch to the day shift because we're doing deep cleaning in all, in all the rooms sure so it's perfect for me because now that i'll be on that day shift that friday i have time to like come home you know, shower, get sure. ready, get all my equipment ready, and then go down to the convention sure. and, you know, have a good time that yeah. night and get up and do it again on the next day. So yeah. I, I think it works. I think it's a perfect and great idea, and I can't wait to, I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. I can't, I can't wait for Midsummer yeah. Screen. Well, we're, we're, ready, we're ready to have you guys. Yeah, it's been as, fun. Soon, as soon as you guys had said tickets were on sale, I was like, yes. There you go. When I heard three days, I was like, yes. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Especially the, the, just like the short little sweet Friday night, like, yeah, just right. A little taste. So you're not exhausted Saturday already. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure people will have partied a little bit too much come Saturday morning. They'll be oh, like, yeah. "Oh my god!" But you know, that's yeah. the way it is, and yeah. it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun and exciting. The whole thing's gonna be great. I'm very excited. With that being said, though, being that Midsummer Scream 2020 tickets are on sale, we at the Knights of Horror, um, and this one goes out to especially Sammy because this was Sammy's idea and this was a very good idea of his. Um, we figured since tickets went on sale this weekend, we thought we'd give away a weekend general admission ticket for one lucky fan to uh, get to experience Midsummer Scream. If you've never been before, or if you uh, are going again and you're going to buy tickets, whoever wins this, there's one free ticket for you for general admission for the weekend so you can enjoy panels, 
um, you got the Hall of Shadows, you've got vendors, you've got amazing people cosplaying, you got friends of the of the horror community all there, everyone in one place, and it's just it's it's a positive place to be at, and it's an amazing place to be at, and we want one lucky fan to go. So Rick West, wait a minute, we're, hang on a second, hold it right there, hold it right there, Sammy. That's a great idea. Yeah, we love that you guys did that. Yeah, yeah, but we're gonna one up you. Really? Uh oh, dude! I can't be in the house. I mean, what we're gonna oh, do? Oh man! We are going to give away right now. One lucky winner is gonna get two gold bat passes. Two gold oh, bat passes. So you don't have to go by yourself. Wow. You're gonna be very popular with somebody else for at least the weekend. Wow! And so we're gonna do that. That'll get you uh, into the show floor an hour early on Saturday and Sunday. Wow! Front of line access for most of the panels and presentations. Uh, Front of line access for most of the stuff in the Hall of Shadows. Wow. Uh, free admission to the Saturday night party. There it is. There it is. So we're going to do that, two gold bat passes right that now. That shocked us. We there didn't even we know. We had no idea that was coming. That was not scripted. That was not planned. <laughs> that shocked us. No. So. Yeah, we love, you know what? We love your enthusiasm. So when you said that you were going to do this, I immediately got on the horn with our executive director, David Markland. Yeah. And I said, hey, listen, I'm going to go do this podcast this weekend. I want to take these guys gold bat passes, and he said, "Absolutely." Okay. So, from our team to you guys, this awesome. is our gift, and to your to your listeners. Awesome. So, so. you guys heard it here. Two gold bats are on the line. Awesome. So, this is going to be awesome. So, Rick, I have all the names put in here. 105 people have entered this contest. Oh my god. 105 people have entered this contest. So, do this. Do this. Scroll the phone five times because it's our fifth anniversary. Go down to the fifth line, and that's the winner. Last one, choose. And the lucky winner is Alicia underscore is the name. Alicia underscore is the name. Is the name. That's the winner. That's Alicia, the you're going to go to Midsummer Scream with gold back gold passes. Gold back Rocking passes, it. man. That is Great. awesome. Well, uh, Rick, thank you, thanks again for of doing course. that. That's amazing. That's it's very our nice pleasure. of you guys. Our pleasure. Um, so... With all that Midsummer Screen 2020 information and, of course, the giveaway, let's get into... Wait, we still got to give away ours. Oh, we got to give away ours, too? And now, wow. dude, and now, now, now you're super popular, dude. Now, now, now you got extra got stuff to give away. Another general mission ticket to wow. give away. So well, there on you top go. of the two gold back, the two gold back got away, so Alicia is the name. Uh, right. We will contact you on social media, yeah. and we will let you know all the info. Congratulations, so, Alicia. Congratulations. Alicia, so, we'll see you there. We'll see you. We will see you there. So, I will take her names out of the... Um, randomizer since she won the two gold bat that's, that's right. awesome um, so we're gonna choose one more uh, for the general mission weekend and we we think um, like I said Sammy this was a great idea for you again Rick West thank you for awesome. doing what you did of course that's awesome so here we go this is for the general mission weekend uh, pass and here we go the winner is Wilmer, Wilmer the goat Wow Wilmer, Wilmer the, the goat. goat it's not bad it's not bad. <laughs> bad. That's good. That's good. So That's there's awesome. the winner right there. Um, we just put, we put all the names in the randomizer. So thank you everyone for, um, of course, entering. Awesome. Um, thank you guys. And we look forward to seeing you guys at Midsummer Scream. We will see you guys there. Yes. And if you happen to see me buzzing around, be sure and stop and say hi, introduce yourselves. Yes. And uh, it'll be kind of like a high bye usually, <laughs> but uh, we'd love to say hi to you guys. Congratulations. Yes. Um, so with all that being said, Rick West, let's get into, let's get into let's you now. Let's do it. Let's do it. So... Uh, let me see where we are camera wise at. I think we are still good. All right, we're good. Okay, so let's let's bring it back to the beginning, man. Sure. What got you into horror, man? Wow. Okay, so um, I was that kid that was like for as long as I can remember into scary stuff. Yeah. Never went through a phase where I was like afraid of the dark or afraid of things like that. It, it, very early on, I, I think probably one of the first horror films I ever saw was. Um, I, I must have been just chilling one night with my grandparents. I grew up mostly with my grandparents, and uh, the original Halloween was on HBO. Yes. Oh wow. And I was like, "What the hell is this? This is amazing, <laughs> right?" And that's how I first was introduced to Michael Myers and the world of Halloween was was a, a rebroadcast on HBO. And then I remember, uh, you know, when when the second one came out, my grandfather took me to the movie theater to to go see it. And uh, he took me to the first horror film that I ever saw in a theater was John Carpenter's The Fog. Nice. And so went and did that. <coughs> and uh, at some point when I was a little kid, and you know, I'm 50 now, so this was a couple days ago. Um, you know, somewhere along the line, 
somebody introduced me to haunted houses. Okay. okay. And back in the day, it would have been, I grew up in the Inland Empire, so it was the Redlands and San Bernardino area. And uh, somewhere along the line, we went up going to like a March of Dimes haunted house. Okay. And I remember waiting in line forever, and I was kind of like, well, what, are, what is this type of thing? And I remember my grandpa saying, well, it's, it's a haunted house or whatever. And I had no idea what a haunted house was. And so I went through this thing, and it was like, freaking awesome like nice. every scene yeah. was you know blood and guts and people screaming and and <laughs> reaching out at me and i just i thought it was fantastic and at this point i'm i'm younger than 10 at okay. this point nice and i just really got into that and that and then the horror movies you know when i realized oh there's more than just michael on hbo yeah you know <laughs> there's a whole plethora of things really exploding at that point in the late 70s and then the early 80s come around and i'm really become a hardcore like horror fan and i'm still going to the theater to see um movies with my grandfather and uh a very pivotal moment came when we went and saw i wanted to see there was this shitty shitty horror movie that came out called madman <laughs> and i think they changed it i think for distribution they changed the name years later so, something like campfire murders or campfire I, I don't know but it was madman it was madman mars is what it was okay and they struck a distribution deal to have it play double features in the theater with night on elm street okay okay so now at the time we're gonna go way back here there was no social media no nope. nobody knew what what movies were when they came out unless you happen to see an ad in the newspaper or a really bad Trailers are horrible, man. Oh, yeah. You look at trailers now from like, <laughs> you know, like, 30 years ago. I know. And you're like, what in the hell was anybody thinking? Compared to now, you have like, they get you, oh, they suck you in. Unbelievable. Yeah. They're so bad. So, um, I remember we, we watched Mad Men, and I don't even remember the movie. But then I remember my grandfather and I were both in, in the men's room, and we were both going to the bathroom. And my grandpa's like, well, you know, this is playing with another movie called Night Around Elm Street. We can hang out if you want to and watch it, and if it's any good, we'll stay, and if it's not, we can always leave. And when we went into that theater and the lights went out, oh. and oh, man, Night the uh, you know the rest is history. We all fell yeah. in love with, with Wes Craven and Freddy Krueger, yeah. and, and just, Jesus God, just having been there to see the birth of a horror icon was just something that was so cool you know Definitely. i i had missed i was a little too young to in the theater witness the birth of of you know jason or or mike myers you know but but to be there for the birth of freddie you know yeah was really really cool so um one of our beautiful set pieces original made claw one of my oh, co-workers made those. i love it that's fantastic yeah, yeah. it's actually fit to fit robert Dude, head that is so yeah. good that yeah. is i love it yeah. So that was it, man. I, I just I, I fell in love with that, and um, it just kind of snowballed, right? And uh, in the early '80s, very early '80s, uh, I was at a youth group, a church youth group, and they they sent us home with these permission slips. Said we're going to go to Not Scary Farm. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like, what's what's Not Scary <laughs> Farm? You know? And they're like, well, it's Not Scary Farm. You know, and I was like, yeah, of course, I've grown up with Not Scary Farm, and I was like eleven or so at this point, 11, yeah. 12, or whatever at this point. And they're like, well, it, they they turn out all the lights and the fog up the streets and there's all these monsters roaming around and there's these haunted houses. And I was like, what? I'd never heard of this yeah. such thing, yeah. right? So I went and I can remember, I don't have a m huge lot of, amount of memory from that night, but mm -hmm. I, I can tell you we parked, on, we parked in that parking lot on La Palma across from Fiesta Village because when we parked, um, we could see the fog billowing up over the, the fence onto La Palma. Nice. And that would have been from like Industrial Evil or whatever. When they had Gasoline Alley there, yeah. you know, they had a big walk through there and it would have been coming from that. Awesome. And, and I just remember that it was instant, like, oh my God, this does not get better. You know, yeah. I, have, I have found Nirvana, the entire theme park, you know, <laughs> devoted to horror and Halloween and not Scary Farm then became just that was instantly my jam and that played out years later obviously with with theme park adventure and yes and all the stuff that we did with them but uh that's how it began man just uh, me happening to catch halloween on on hbo one night while we were chilling yeah. and uh i just i fell in love with the industry and it it sank its teeth in and it's never let go there it is we're, we're gonna dive into a, a another part of your your history okay here. 
Uh, Boot Hill. Wow. Okay. Extreme Home Haunts or uh, Epic Home Haunts. I've seen it. Epic Home Haunts. I was folding clothes one night and I was like, I need something to watch. I've always heard good things about this, and that's when I found out about the history of you and Boot Hill. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. So Boot Hill is, um, and Epic Home Haunts is streaming now on Amazon. Amazon Prime. That's where I saw it, yeah. So if you have Amazon Prime, make sure that you're watching Epic Home Haunts. Yeah. Uh, Josh Quillen did a fantastic job. So many amazing that people together. in that movie, yeah. It's a really great, really yeah. heartfelt uh, film. So Shay Foley and I both lived in Irvine uh, up a million years ago, and uh, we just decided it for the Halloween season, especially for Halloween night, we just wanted, his mom had a home in Woodbridge and wanted to just do it up and just do like a little yard display yeah, and just hang out and hand out candy and all that stuff. And so the first year it was just really um, not much of anything. I think there was a series of styrofoam, not, not styrofoam, like a spongy, spongy, uh, not even latex, I don't even know what it was, but it was these these pumpkins that were sold at Hallmark mm. that all had different faces, different facial expressions. Okay. And so I bought like all five or six of those and we put those in the yard and I think we might have put a few really like low low budget like floodlight stuff, you know, and I think I probably had a fog machine and we nice. ran the fog a little bit. Nice. And that was it. We probably played a generic soundtrack, you know, I don't even remember what we would have played at the time. But people loved it. Yeah. And we inadvertently got the haunter bug. And we were like, oh, wait, this is actually really cool putting mm -hmm. on a show for people. Yep. So we decided, well, we need a we need a real show. And, you know, it just kind of went from there. It kind of takes on a... Any haunter can tell you it, that has more than just, you know, an average little display where they put up store-bought things. It, it becomes something much bigger than you intended oh, yeah. it to be, always. And so... I wrote the story of Boot Hill, and it's uh, it's about the town of Bridgewood, who which is Woodbridge backwards, uh, that materializes every year on Halloween, and uh, we kind of made this whole western uh, backstory to it. And a good friend of mine, Andy Garfield, uh, he is uh, he's an incredible musician, and he's a creative in the themed entertainment industry now. He does. He did the um, the end music, uh, the universe and you for Men in Black oh, in, nice. in Orlando. Nice. And uh, he's done a lot of different attraction things for for international parks, and he's he's just an incredible talent. He's the one who did our score. Nice oh, wow. for Boot Hill, and awesome. I drove him bat shit because I would sit over his shoulder like day in and day out going <laughs> over the score with him, and because uh, I had a strong music background also. And that score that you hear at Boot Hill yeah. is the same that we've had for 20-something years now. Yeah, yeah. So that score has never changed. That's the Andy Garfield score, and uh, that's probably his, uh, maybe Andy's first themed entertainment, you know, yeah. score that, that he did. They and, all start uh, small and they grow from there. There you go, yeah. So, um, and then Boot Hill, just like every year we would add different effects, and the challenge was... We couldn't do anything maze-wise. We talked about maybe going into the backyard and coming back out, but then that's, you know, then you got to deal with his mom going, I don't know about that, you know, yeah. type, type of thing. And then you worry about strangers getting hurt and, you know, whatever. And so we just decided we, we'd go up to the front door, turn around and come back out. But we packed so much stuff. If you've been to Boot Hill, you can see there's a lot of stuff that's packed from the beginning to that front door yeah. and then back out. And even more stuff now that I'm not involved. Um, because I moved away, and then Glenn Schmidt and, and other people stepped in and really started helping Shay with this, and they just took it to a whole other level. Mm -hmm. You know, fantastic level that they do. Um, but we used to just do really just simple. To us, it was simple. We got like 60, 60 patches of, of sod or whatever, and we, we covered the entire driveway mm -hmm. and made that the entrance, so we figured that would give us more real estate to play with. And it was really funny because the families would come, and Mom and the kids would go, and dads were too cool for school so the dads would stand out there and then you'd hear the dads talking to each other they're like oh shit you know what they did this is the driveway that's sod you know and they, they'd get into all you know the, the, the details yeah. and stuff yeah so the dads were outside going damn you know and the, the mom and the kids were in there getting scared and having fun um and that's so that's really how it began and i did it with shay for years um i moved away then to san francisco and that became then logistically impossible for me to come down and, and, yeah. and do that a lot and so it just kind of the baton was handed to uh glenn and, and and a bunch of other people that that helped him out every year and uh they just celebrated their 25th 
anniversary, which was fantastic. And awesome. it's something that I'm very proud of. And anytime I go, it's like a homecoming, you know, yeah, hanging yeah. out with those guys. Now, do you go every year to check oh, it out yeah. every other season? Yeah, we go and we take our pictures all yeah. together. <laughs> and yeah. The OG yeah. crew is back. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always very great. And Boot Hill's a, a must see every year for me. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, going from Boot Hill and then, of course, your time with um, Theme Park Adventure, which we'll get to in a yeah. little bit. Um, well, actually, what inspired you to want to get more into the the industry of, for haunt? Just my love for it, really, and it was a culmination of uh, you know I worked at Disneyland out of high school mm -hmm. in the in the late eighties, and I worked the haunted mansion. Yeah, and so that really kind of got it into my veins. I worked haunted mansion and pirates, arguably the two greatest mm -hmm. attractions in the world, and um, you know I just I, I started writing for. Uh, a friend of mine had a, a Disney Anna publication, and then so I wrote articles for this Disney publication, and people really loved my writing. Mm -hmm. They loved that, and it came to the point where it was like, you know, I love other things too, not just Disney. I love knots. I love Las Vegas. I love the zoos. I love roller coasters. Oh yeah. Why not? You know, I love haunted attractions. Why? And there's nothing out there really at the time. There were very few fan publications yeah. out there. This is again, it's hard to imagine, but this was a world that had no blogs, no vlogging. Yep. There was no social media. Yeah. It, if you were going to do a publication, you just you did it yourself. And I did it on my old Amiga 2000 computer. Nice. You know, I, I created TPA to fill that void. Yeah. And um, because I, it, it was for for selfish reasons, I wanted to explore things that really got me going and then I wanted to be able to share that with with other fans I figured if I liked it someone else is gonna like reading Definitely. about it learning about it oh yeah and that's how TPA in September of 94 was born and because of my own love for Halloween and haunted attractions it just kind of was inbred into the DNA mm -hmm. of TPA and suddenly I started covering home haunts and I was the first publication ever to, to, to do anything with, with knots, really, more than, uh, you know, once in a while there'd be a random article in, in, in a newspaper about, like, the makeup department or, or whatever, and your news broadcasts were only just, you know, weather shots, yeah, you know, type of thing. Yeah. With monsters running around behind you in ghost town, and that was it. And so I actually approached knots and said, hey, I really want to get into what makes not scary farm not scary farm and they weren't in they weren't into it at the beginning mm -hmm. which is hard to imagine now because you know they have all the bloggers out and they have oh, their big yeah. haunt event and all this stuff for for media but in the very beginning nobody else was doing that mm -hmm. and i remember i remember i wanted to publish pictures of them building mazes and i remember sitting in their marketing department with them at the table saying so would it be okay if I took pictures of the the constructions of, of the mazes to, to put in on TPA and they were just kind of like why would anybody care about construction and now you can't imagine any haunt anywhere oh, not sharing their build pictures it's one of right? the biggest things on YouTube with yes youtubers like myself we go down to these parks and we yes. film construction updates yeah it's one it's a big thing now people get excited for it now yeah. actually to see how things are going so yeah so in 94 we kind of blazed that trail yeah with knots and then that somewhere along the line and I don't know when because it all goes together but somewhere along the line then I started filming the video flow throughs of the nice. mazes that the TPA became really known for yeah. um, and that over the years was um, was something I was very grateful for mm -hmm. and now you know um, TPA is retired now a couple of years um, which is fine because now everybody and their mother has the smartphones and they go through doing <laughs> yeah. that stuff. Yeah. but then you know I, I think that TPA filled a very important void and, and I bump into so many people whether they are haunt monsters, whether they are pros in the in the industry like John Cook or Ted Doherty, they all grew up on TPA and they yeah. and, and it's it's very common actually for somebody that I'm talking to, they'll say, Hey, I just gotta let you know, man, I'm into this because I, I grew up watching your videos from yeah. TPA and that is such an amazing As a kid I remember watching amazing a lot of TPA. Thing. That was like the channel to watch for the walkthroughs and stuff because when I was not... It just didn't exist. No, when nobody I, else was doing it. Really. When I was a kid, yeah. like, I just didn't... I was too scared to go to these events, oh. you know? And I, as I got older, of course, I started going, but TPA was 
the reason how I got to watch these events and see these yeah. mazes and stuff. So thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> so it's just something that that happened, you yeah. know, and and it wasn't even my idea. Um, I had an old Panasonic VHS camera, which was still one of my. It was one of my best video cameras that I ever have ever owned. Right, it was yep. the big shoulder deal, yep. and you pop the whole VHS cassette in there. Google it, you'll see what a VHS cassette <laughs> is. And um, a good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, another guy that's just big guy in the entertainment industry, uh, Chris Merritt. Mm -hmm. He uh, he's the one that who did the Not Preserve book, okay. and he he's done the Mark Davis book that just came out, mm -hmm. and he works at, at Walt Disney Imagineering now, and. Um, He's an amazing talent. He was a huge fan of Not Scary Farm, and he, for the first couple of years, borrowed my camera to take. So he's got actually older <laughs> footage than than I do yeah. of Not Scary Farm, where he was going through filming the, the mazes and everything. Wow. Oh. And so then when I started TPS, I was like, you oh, know, yeah, I, I want to do that, you know, type of thing. Yeah. So give me my camera back. <laughs> but, uh, but, but it was just one of those things where it was something that uh, seemed like a good idea, and I just, I had the platform then mm -hmm. to do it, and boy, once not said yes to it, um, it, it was, uh, it, and it became an operation. I mean, I can talk about it now because we don't do it anymore. But even up to the very end, it was it was logistically it was very challenging, and we were the only ones all throughout the years. And others asked and were d denied. We were the only ones that were allowed to do these flow throughs at yeah. Not Scary Farm. Uh, it required uh, coordination with the security team, with the marketing team, with the operations team. I had to have escorts. Mm -hmm. uh, we would call two mazes ahead and tell them, you know, the, they're on deck that will be there, you know, next and, and all that. So it was a big operation, and when wow. we would get there, the the blackout, not the blackouts, the, uh, the the managers of each maze would go through and tell all the blackouts, okay, disappear, and, you know, and, and if you happen to be in the shot, don't talk to the camera or whatever, and they'd all go through, and they'd say, TPA's coming through, and, you know, after a while, like, it would empty out the break rooms, because nobody wanted to be left out of the video, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. So you'd see, like, over the years, as these things mature, some of the mazes, and I'm thinking a lot of, like, um, uh... God, it started with, I don't even know what maze it started with, but uh, Axe Murder Manor, I think, is what it started with. But then all the way up through through the newer mazes, the cast really got into it. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of the flow-throughs that are more like productions, as opposed to just, rah, you know, jump out. Like, they really got into the camera coming through and made a whole production for us. Yeah. And some of those got very, very uh, elaborate over the years. And, uh, like, at the end of one of my last flow throughs that I did it was the end of Dark Ride like mm. every monster in the maze was in the finale scene because nice. oh, wow. once we went through the maze they would all run then outside of so the maze then, yep. right because <laughs> as we were going through um, operations would hold the line yeah. so that nobody would come bum rushing up around us and all that so it was it was a big logistical challenge to have Absolutely. us do that that I'm very grateful for and uh, it was just a wonderful time but it served its purpose and uh I retired TPA just because of my own personal uh, life, my, my, my professional. I'm a, I'm a creative director and show writer in the themed entertainment industry. Yes. So when you have bigger clients that you're working with, whether it's Universal or, or whoever, it's harder and harder to have a fan site. Yeah. And have yeah. a, you know, you're, you're doing all this stuff with these huge proprietary, super secret projects. Yeah, you have a fan site. So it, it's kind of like yeah. the, the juxtaposition is really kind of awkward turtle. It's a sacrifice you, you know? have to take. To, so yeah. it, it, it came to the point where it was very, very clear that it was time to kind of hang up the fan hat and uh, at least as far as blogging and vlogging and that kind of thing goes and just concentrate on doing, you know, professional stuff. Definitely. I had Midsummer and all that uh, and and that's fine. That's complimentary to what I do, but um, it was time to hang up the fan site aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Just because it raised a lot of eyebrows and, um, you know, quite frankly, the, the and this is a whole other conversation, but the playing field for that has really changed. And, and, and a lot of the parks, you know, they have new media teams that come in and it was very apparent to me that they didn't care that I had been a, a, a steadfast partner for two plus decades with them. They suddenly were giving our spots away at media events to like blogger mommies mm -hmm. and stuff that had like no idea what the hell they were talking about at these media events or afterwards or got the names of rides wrong or didn't care about the history of things. But because these mom bloggers suddenly had, you know, you know, 50,000, 60,000 followers, that was more important yeah. than all the work that we had done for decades with them. 
and so I could just tell it was just getting kind of ugly and 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 too competitive. I, I just thought, you know, we kind of blazed all these trails. We did what we did, and I don't need to prove myself to the, like a lot of these parks were saying. Well, you know, you need to submit a package to us that tells you know how many followers you have. I'm like, dude, you've known me for twenty plus years. I don't need to prove myself to you or anybody. Yeah. Okay. And so it, it, it was it was it was apparent that yeah. it, it was time to move on. Definitely. And I did and I'm glad. And I still bump into people like you guys yeah. that uh, grew up on TPA and oh, that yeah. just that does me a whole lot of good. That's that makes awesome. me feel really great. Yeah and not only not only do you have of course the you know the TPA going but it was like you know, now people are starting to recognize you for Midsummer Scream as oh, well. Sure. So now you're grabbing, now you have like both fan bases to both come up to you. I bet it's an amazing feeling when, when you're at Midsummer Scream and that's the one thing people come up to you like, hey, thanks for TPA, like, and all that. It's working. pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and it comes from all uh, random, random places like um, Ryan from BuzzFeed. Mm -hmm. So everybody loves Ryan and, and, we were with him one night at Delusion, and he was put into our group, yeah. and he was very friendly and very excited, and, and we were chatting just a little bit, and then we took this long tour afterwards, John and, and, and Braver and his crew gave us this big you know tour afterwards showing us how everything worked, and uh, Ryan, they asked if Ryan wanted, you know, Ryan, do you want to stay in for this? And he was like, yeah, of course. And so at the end, of course, all, all the girls were like, can we get a picture with you, Ryan? And so it became the, like this Ryan, you know, meet and greet. And I just jokingly said to him, I said, I'm in a fangirl now. Can I get a picture too with you? And he goes, actually, I got to tell you, I've been fanboying all night because I grew up on TPA. Uh, and I was like, come on, man. Yeah. You're this huge BuzzFeed phenomenon, <laughs> you know. And he's like fanboying all night. And he's just the nicest guy. But so... yeah. And then just at Haunt X, we were just recently at Haunt X, yep. and there was this young guy that came up to me, and, and, and Nova and I were standing at one of the vendors, and this guy comes up to me and he says, I know you people. And we're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> and uh, he's, like, he's like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, who, who are you? And Nova's like, what? And I'm like, oh, been here, done this. Okay, um, Midsummer Scream. And he goes, no. <laughs> no. No. He goes, he goes, no. He goes, you look like the guy from Theme Park Adventure. And I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. I'm like, well, that's me too. That's me, yeah. And he got so excited because he had grown up yeah. on these. And oh, so yeah. it was really funny that suddenly yeah, I'm like, well, it's Midsummer. You know me from Midsummer. <laughs> no. No. And it was the funniest thing. <laughs> that was like a shock. And like, everyone yeah. knows me from it's Midsummer. Really now. It's really funny. Like <laughs> so, but it was great. But yes. We we go into uh, restaurants. We were just at we were at a restaurant the other night, and our waitress just she we, she was great with us through dinner. And at the very end, she goes, "I love your show. I'm I'm a vendor actually at Midsummer." And so I mean, oh, that's awesome. And we'll be walking through a crowd, you know, somewhere at Knotts or something, and and somebody will walk by and say, you know, we love your festival. We love your show. Oh yeah. So people do recognize, and it's great because there's just nothing but huge love out there. Oh yeah. For Midsummer, and that's the th that's the thing I think we that we always try to encourage at midsummer is the one thing is like it's a positive place to be you know yeah. leave all the bullshit outside yeah come inside and enjoy yourself it's homecoming, you know? it's homecoming. yeah it's homecoming. all the everyone there's a horror fan yeah in, in some way or another and yeah. it's cool to me personally it's like much like comic-con i love watching people cosplay yeah that's one of the many things i like about going to conventions is watching people get creative with cosplays yeah i like seeing uh when I went the very first year, I went like the first year, my first year was two years ago. When I went, I never had heard of the Hall of Shadows. Right. So when I walked through that, I was just blown away. Sure. And then the next yeah. year, I got a chance to go through it again, and it, it, each year, it's just, there's more oh, yes. creativity out there, oh, you yes. know what I mean? And, yes. and that's the one thing I think I look forward to every year, is to see, okay, this year was great, how are they going to step it up next year? And f every year, you guys do it and it's something and, and that is something that is very uh purposeful yeah we never rest on our laurels i speak for the entire team when i say nobody is resting on their laurels Definitely. when it comes to midsummer or the production of it of any aspect mm -hmm. of it we sweat the little things i mean we we really you know after doing this i mean because we did before that we did scare LA for for its first three years yeah mm -hmm. and so this really is you know almost 10 years you know that we've been doing this now um, there are certain aspects to it that are very mechanical. Mm -hmm. Like we know 
it's like building a car. You know you need wheels. You know you need an engine to make it go. You need to have seats. You need to have a steering wheel. So we know these components already. Mm -hmm. But it's always how do we better things. Exactly. And it's always that moment of like when we see this beast, because it really is a beast and it's this, this living, breathing thing that we've created that changes and grows every year. And seeing it operation is, it, it's a double-edged sword because you sit there going, this is really fantastic. And then there's this little voice in the back of the head going, and shit, how do we even top that? How yeah. do you even, you know? And so you set the bar so high that you just, you always worry about hitting that ceiling, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't know, you know, maybe we'll have an off year some year. I mean, we just, you just don't know. You just never assume because you know what happens when you assume. Yeah. Uh, so you just you just never assume that it's going to be bigger and better every year. So we got to really you know lean into it. So um, for our fifth anniversary this year, we um, for for like the past couple of years, people it's a really interesting. Like uh, we heard a lot last year, people saying we really want like more vintage <laughs> Halloween stuff, mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like struck us as funny because we we're like. Well, everything that we do is like vintage Halloween, yeah. like, you know, our logo, all this stuff is like mm -hmm. old school Halloween, but people just like love that, mm -hmm. you know, and Mark Lynn and I had the really interesting conversation not too long ago where I said it's just interesting because obviously if you look at our logo stuff and you look at especially the artwork that we're rolling out this year for, for the fifth anniversary, it kind of calls back to like the decorations that you'd find in like the 60s, the 60s and 70s, right? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter if you weren't a kid at that time to have those. Kids these days, young kids, see that and instantly get, oh, that's vintage Halloween. Oh, yeah. And that was, I think, beyond the scope of what we thought. Because we originally were like, well, we want to, like, our childhood. What do we remember, yeah. you know, from yeah. Halloween? It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter whether you are 50 or you are 15. Mm -hmm. You see that stuff and go... That's Halloween. That is that is OG Halloween stuff, and so people get it, and it's just cross generational, yeah. which is really interesting. It was something that we didn't really expect or really think about, but it certainly has happened. Yeah, and and it's great. So this year you will see a return in a huge way to uh, the vintage feel of the Halloween, Halloween. stuff. You're going to see that in our shirts. That. You're going to see that in the merchandise. Uh, you're certainly going to see that in the Cal Haunts experience, which is Trick or Treat Lane. At the beginning yes. of, of Hall of Shadows, yes. yeah. uh, there, those guys are amazing and insane. And last year, their Tiki Terror experience was so good. Yeah. Um, but it was so extensive that it like almost killed these guys. You know, they they were building every weekend from like February or March, mm -hmm. all the way up to go time. Yeah. And you know, we were like, well, let's let's th you know throttle it back so it doesn't kill you guys. You know, this yeah. this time or whatever. The experience that they're doing now is over twice the size <laughs> of Tiki Terror. They're like, oh, you don't want to kill us? And, and it's like, damn, okay, okay. Uh, so I think that once we reveal more about what that is going to entail, yes. people are going to be really excited. I'm excited. We're I, super excited I about just it. want July to get here already. There I, you go. I just want to go already. I, I love it. It's a lot of work for us on the weekend, but yeah. it, it's so much fun just being around friends and, and all the panels. Um, yeah. And I like how you brought up the, of course, you know, kids these days know what the Vincent Tallarine is. Yeah, they do. John Murdy actually came out in, a, in an interview and he was like, you know, it's it's right now it's hip to love the 80s. Kids these days love stuff with the 80s. Back in the 80s, kids those days were loving stuff in the 50s. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like kids, I mean, they see these movies, they watch these movies, a bunch of different, you know, you know, fashions and all this stuff comes back. You know, the yeah. 80s, like, it, for some reason, the 80s right now, is it was a great decade. Well, it's and hot. It's hot. It's hot again, though. You, you got know? Stranger Things. Yeah. You, you got, it seems like everything is a callback now yeah. in the 80s, right? So, Stranger Things, American Horror Story. Yes. It was, was 80s, right? And so. right before we went on, we had Halloween on, and we were just talking about all the callbacks to the original Halloween, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of vintage Halloween stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, we... Like I said, we're excited. I, I want it to be in July already. It's going to be great. I want to go back I to think work. the hardest thing for fans of the Hall of Shadows, I think the hardest thing is going to be on that Friday night being on the show floor, Looking standing in front of the entrance of this thing, but you can't and back. not being able to go yeah. in. Knowing that behind that black curtain, you'll probably even be able to hear it. 
all these haunts are being finished and, and built and, and, and yes, and stuff. That it's just like it's Disneyland. Just, yeah. just, just feed away into the dark. Rope drop right there. But you can't get there <laughs> yeah. until the next morning. It's like Christmas Eve, right? Oh yeah. So like I think we're gonna have a lot of we're gonna have a lot of Hall of Shadows fans. I think it's going. Come yeah. on, I want to peek. You know, you're gonna have there. everyone standing around there like, what? It's not open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I can't wait. I mean, I, I think last year too with the whole tiki theme, it was cool that we had yeah. there was a talking tiki outside. Yeah, Hall of Shadows. That, that was, was that was awesome. Tum Tum, I think his name was. Yeah, was so yeah. And Diane Meyer carved that, and uh, the rest of the Cow Haunts team brought it to life, and it's fantastic. Yeah, and then uh, I can tell you there won't be a carved tiki in front oh, this year. Okay. Of Hall of Shadows. Oh man, okay. there. Spoiler, <laughs> spoiler. No, no, no carved car tiki, tiki man. this year in front of Trick or Treat Lane. Sorry, no carved Sorry. tiki. Yeah. Um, but I like like with the vintage Halloween. I don't know if you went through the uh, Bloodshed Brothers. I did, and I that was through. all vintage. Oh, I told them earlier because they're coming back this year. Yes, I told them. I said, "You guys are gonna be very happy. You don't have to worry about your theme at all this year. <laughs> you guys are gonna be right in there, right in there." Because the overall, the overarching theme of of Hollow Shadows really this year is Trick or Treat Forever. Mm -hmm. And so again, it, it ties back to the whole vintage thing. We are gonna have um, we're gonna have a bar. In there, I don't think we, we we haven't announced this, but we are going to have a bar in there that uh, Drunken Devil is doing for us again. Oh, nice! And uh, it's uh, I think it's 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 called Devil's Night. It's going to be called the Devil's Night uh, like Bar that. and Lounge. And uh, so Matt Dorado and his team are going to be back, and it's going to be like classic Halloween type type bar, and nice. it's going to be a fantastic place just to chill and have a couple drinks and hang out with your friends during the during the weekend in the Hall of Shadows and. I'm all for that. Yeah, so that's a that's a little nugget, little nugget yeah, I just dropped there for you go. guys. Yeah, world exclusive. There you go. So, <laughs> Devil's Night Bar is coming. Devil's so Night. Yeah. Um, production side of Midsummer Scream. What do you always find the most difficult every year creating this event? Sure. Um, and uh, and that's funny because it's always the stuff that you would never expect it to be. For for years and years and years and years, it was the party. Okay. You'd think, dude, just open a few bars. Put a DJ out and people dance. Instant fun time. Mm -hmm. We pulled our hair out for years trying to figure out what the proper balance is for a really kick-ass party. And um, I mean, our first year out of the gate was the year to make the statement. So the first year we had Oingo Boingo play, which that's, that's pretty awesome. that's, that's pretty really pretty freaking big for oh, for a brand oh, for a dude, brand new I show. Wish I would have been there, for dude. That. Having Boingo play is like. It doesn't get bigger than that for a, for a Halloween convention. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and that was my thing. And David David Markland and the rest of the team kind of indulged me in that. And they said, if you want Boingo, go get Boingo. And I went and got Boingo. <laughs> and that was really really good. But then the years afterwards, I mean, we tried it one year on the Queen Mary, and that didn't quite work because space wise, it just wasn't good. And it was one of these things that we really just kind of obsessed about. Mm -hmm. And I was I was more of the camp of no you know just put a lot of bars out and people just want to have mixers and hang out and talk and put music on and David was like no if we're gonna really commit ourselves to having a midsummer scream party we really need to have programming what really needs to be special and I was like are you sure about that and so we sat down one day David and I have lunch all the time and talk about things um, up and beyond our regular meetings that we have and that's how we say in sync pretty much mm -hmm. and uh david said okay i'm gonna pitch this to you and i thought oh god here we go because if <laughs> i don't like it it's going to be another round of uh what about what about what about right and he said okay and this is a couple of years ago he said it's, it's going to be called midsummer scream after dark okay we're going to have bars and dancing and the dj and we'll do a costume contest we're also going to do a screening and during the screening somebody from that film is going to be doing a com live commentary nice. and then we're going to have this open and that open and we're going to have and it was perfect mm -hmm. david hit on the head squarely what midsummer scream after dark and, th and that just it was perfect mm -hmm. I think he's he was surprised that I because I'm usually the one that says yeah but you know yeah. and 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 uh, and I think that's why we work very well together because there's always that creative tension where we're like I don't know about that yeah. and, and we're comfortable with each other enough now where you know if I bring up something David will go no, you're out of your head that sucks <laughs> or or I'll say that to him no, yeah. I think that sucks you know yeah. I know he wants to see that yeah. so we're we're very comfortable and I think he was like fell out of his chair I was like 
that's perfect. I'm like, that's that's what we're doing. Exactly, yeah. And so that was born. That template was born. So we are running with that, you know, this year. Not giving away the theme yet of mid You're going to have to wait. A little bit longer for that. Yep. Um, but we think that it's something that people are going to be very excited about awesome. and really get into costume-wise. Um, so that's, that, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's off and running. So the party has always been a very tricky thing yeah. for us. And then... You know, I, I think just getting bodies into the building, mm -hmm. that's very tricky. It's no, I mean, we joke about it, but it is, it, it's it's no joke that the line is very long yes. on Saturday to get in. Um, there's only so much that we can do. Long Beach Convention Center, they they have to, they, they, they dictate how their security is going to work yes. with us. Yeah. We can't, we can't say, well, just bring on 20 more, you know, magnetometers in it. There's only a set number of, of, of magnetometers and security that these people are going to give to any convention. Yeah. And so we can only move as fast as the security line mm -hmm. can move. And so that is something that we uh, anguish over, really, year in and year out, is how do we get these people that are like, some years it can be really hot out there. And that when that sun comes up in the morning and you're standing out on that bridge, oh, yeah. Yeah. we're very aware. People think that we're aloof. We are probably more than any other production team out there for a convention, we are absolutely in tune with what's going on in every aspect. And we know that people are hot up there. And we know that they've been there since 8 a.m. and that they're in cosplay and that it's black and it's hotter than hell. <laughs> we, we're not aloof to this, we, we know. And we anguish over that also every yeah. year. And we have meetings with the Long Beach Convention Center and talk about how can we make this faster for everybody. So that, I would say that's that's also a very, that and, and of course the logistics that we don't have. The hardest thing for, I'll tell you what the hardest thing for me personally, I don't want to speak for the rest of the team, but it's it's hearing people complain about stuff that we have no control over. Yeah. Parking. We know that parking sucks in Long Beach. Parking is going to suck every year because more people are coming. Yes. Yeah. And there's not any expansion of parking in Long Beach at this point. Yep. So that's why we tell people months ahead. I mean, we talk on podcasts. Book your hotel. I tell them, yeah. book the hotel within walking distance. Take take Metro. Take Lyft. And as soon as you start hitting traffic, get out and walk the last two blocks. Get there really early. Get you know? there at 8 o'clock. I tell people, roll in at 7.30 yeah. or 8. Get your parking. Go have breakfast there across the street. And then yeah. come get in line. Yeah. And people just every year we see the posts and we see people on Twitter. We, say, I can't believe the line's so long. We just got here at ten thirty and it's already. I was like, well, we open at eleven. <laughs> what, 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 you don't roll up on Comic Con in San Diego <laughs> and, and and think that you're going to get parking a half hour before doors. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, you can't even get into San Diego. My buddy so, actually lives all the way out in like like Studio City area, uh -huh. and they like left at like three or four in the morning got there like at five or six and slept in their car until yeah. it was time so so it's if, just if there's a will there's a way yeah, yeah. and we do we, we we preach it every year non-stop and so we, we don't have control over parking we don't have control over the the food at the venue the food and drink prices and all that we we don't have we are not allowed to bring in food trucks that that's all done through the long beach convention center yeah. so we don't have say in food and beverage uh, we don't have say over the parking, you know. Um, these are just things that are out of our control, and so that's very hard for us too. Yeah. When people say, "Oh, well, we really like the show, but the parking is so bad. That's just a nightmare. We won't go back." And it's like, that's something that's completely out of our control. That was like us last that's year. Hard. Like we went Saturday, and you know, parking for us was whatever. But you know, I mean, it was hard. But then that's when I knew I was like, okay, we woke up late. We just got to get up earlier. Yeah. It's just something we got to face. I mean, that's that's it is what it is. I know yeah. me as me myself, I know personally what I'm going into. I know yeah. exactly And I think the most con was. goers know. Yeah. But I think the thing that's interesting about Midsummer is that we attract such a wide swath of people mm -hmm. that there are people that come to Midsummer that don't necessarily go to other conventions. Yeah. yeah. So they're coming and they're like horrified number one that there's, you know, 40,000 people there. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's just like any other large scale con. Like, you're going to wait in long lines and you're going to park a long way away. And it doesn't matter whether it's <laughs> D23 or Comic Con yep. or anime. I, it doesn't matter what it is. There are certain things that happen in the con world that most people that are going to these things are, are prepared for. Yep. So I think that a lot of the, a lot of the concern from people or a lot of the vocal, like the complaints from people, they're probably not convention goers. Mm hmm. 
so there is that and, th and there's a learning curve and, and certainly there are things that we listen to all the time that we improve every year you know um, but there it just comes a point where look when there's a lot of people coming to one place for one thing there's going to be lines yep there's going to be lines there's going to be traffic there's just no two ways around it mm -hmm. you know so um so yeah we just tell people just plan 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 ahead yeah you know because we, we're even yeah. talking about trying to get like an airbnb around the area or something yeah like sure you. that way uh, of course because we're, we're, we're gonna bring so much equipment that it's like okay well, one day we're gonna probably bring this for this and yeah. then we could take it back to the hotel get our other equipment and bring it back that way we're not Absolutely. lugging equipment yeah back you know everywhere so i mean and the convention if we like like we did last year if we plan it we, we had a whole schedule we had like okay this time we'll see this panel then we're going to do this podcast and this panel then we'll go see these people because you know they're our friends you know and everything yeah. so we had everything planned out and that's, an, that's another big thing going to this convention is just plan your day really you know just you know plan it yeah. out as to okay i want to see this convention this is at this time from this yeah. time uh then from this time this time we'll go on the show floor we'll go to the hall of shadows it i think honestly for us last year uh it helped a lot yeah a lot yeah because uh, we planned okay these panels are today we got to cover these panels and then the sunday these are the panels we got podcasts in between each panel uh decayed brigade's doing a show let's go support them you know all this yeah. all this stuff so i mean I, I think just planning and yeah just of course the knowledge of hearing from people last year and stuff just just plan ahead big time yeah that's it and i would just be free spirit yeah. yeah and just don't get mad if you don't if well you don't we and the thing is for people that that are veterans now of midsummer as well as people that are noobs coming into it you're not going to see everything we we mm -hmm. we plan it we counter program so that you have to make some hard decisions throughout yeah. the weekend yeah we never want to create and i sound like a broken record every year when i talk about this but we we never want it to be where you go saturday and then halfway through sunday you're walking around going well we've seen everything what do you want to do what do you want to do again yeah. nothing yeah. let's go to the pub across the street you know yeah, type yeah. of thing never for us so we always over program so we always want people leaving going oh my god i didn't get to see that i yeah. didn't get to do that that's just the way we want it mm -hmm. because we never want it to be the show where oh yeah you can do everything if you really really plan you can do everything in one day. Yeah, no, that's no. not us. It's never been us, and it mm -hmm. will never be us. I think that was us last year because we missed the uh, haunted mansion panel. We wanted to see that. Oh and man, I heard that yeah. was a good one. Yeah, that was, in my opinion, the best thing we've ever done. Yeah, as far as and I heard such go. good thing about it. Yeah. I think we were we were doing a podcast or we were yeah. at another panel or something. It's online. I mean, I'm yeah. Obviously, so I mean, yeah, it's I, no, I did catch <laughs> it online. So like, I got to at least see it. But I would have loved to have been there. In person. That's another thing that we're very proud of. Also, is you go into a lot of conventions. They are so not media friendly. Yeah. You know, it's like if you bring out your camera, you will be shot. You know, type of thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we encourage it. Oh, it's we absolutely encourage it unless we are in a situation where it's a studio that says we don't want people taking pictures of this. Yeah. Uh, unless it's something like Zombie Joe's, where <laughs> you know it, there are things in there that you don't want to share on social media. Um, we encourage pictures. We encourage you know the videos. We encourage bloggers and vloggers and and influencers, and we really embrace that. I think last year, we, we, with, that's important to us. With us, we uploaded like twenty three videos that week after. Yeah, Street. dude, that's that's awesome. That was just it was fun because we had so much coverage, uh, and we got to not only well. I think the thing is, I like to get the word out there as much as I can, and I hope people watch it. If they watch it, they watch it. If they don't, well, yeah. I mean. You know, but I, I like to get the word out there as much as I can yeah. because I see this convention and you can already see it now. It's growing. Do you think eventually this convention will grow so much that you'll have to ever move it? The quick answer is no to that. So something that we have decided very early on um, is that we would rather have quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy the Long Beach Convention Center. We think it's a perfect location. Yeah. As well, the parking's not perfect, and the streets are not designed <laughs> for this type of thing. But there, there's a lot of lodging nearby. There are great restaurants yes. nearby within walking distance. So that said, and the venue itself is great. The personality. It's by the beach. It's across the bay from the Queen Mary. Yep. You know, it, it it's a great location. Mm -hmm. uh, would we ever move if we had to move? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there's there's contingency plans. There's always, if you're if you're in this business and you don't have a plan B, yeah, you're not doing it right. Yeah, yeah. so you got to roll with punches. And, and and there are certain years. I mean, we have to. So midsummer is about uh, 
a 16 to 18 month process at this yeah. point. And so we already, we've already put the hold on the convention center for next year. Okay. But it's not like, oh, okay, well, we're going to just automatically give you guys the same weekend. Or, we have to see what's available for them. Yeah. yeah. And if we ever get to a point where, sorry, there's nothing available for yeah. whatever reason, you'd think that they'd hold a place for us, but they don't because it's just a business to them. Yeah. If we're not there, somebody else is going to be there renting part Take of it, it out, you know, yeah. whatever. So, yes, if we had to move, we would. Yeah. And I'm sure that people would follow us. Oh, yeah. And that's, so that's not a problem. Um, but as far as bodies in the building, being too much, we would rather call it sold out than to continue to cram people in to make it to the point where it's just so hot and miserable and crowded that nobody has a good time. Yeah. yeah. Because once you cross that threshold, you have a shitload of people that aren't coming back. Yeah, yeah. I can't stand crowds. So I'm, I am definitely, like, conventions to me, that's like the ninth circle of hell. Yeah. Which is, you know, <laughs> irony here because, you know, it's <laughs> a, but it's different when you're, like, running a show versus, you know, attending going, going, a show. Yeah. Yeah. And... So, no, anything that's crowded to me is just like, ugh, you know. Yeah. So, we did it two years ago. We called it sold out yeah. at midsummer. And we stopped selling tickets because to us, and it's just, it's not a magic number. We don't have a, a buzzer that goes off that says, eh, you know, your 20,000th person is, you know, come. We can just tell. Mm -hmm. We can see it on people's faces. We can see it when we're walking through the space. You know how long it's taking me to walk from you know the hall of shadows to the ballroom upstairs yeah if if i'm having problem navigating you know um we just we just keep a very uh we're very cognizant about that mm -hmm. and the entire team has always agreed that we would rather call it sold out and stop selling tickets aka stop making money to make sure that people have a good quality time of course the quality is so much more important to us than making a quick buck. Yeah. We never see our people like that. We never see our community like that. I respect the hell out of you, you for know, just saying that. Right so, now. dude, our community is yeah. everything to us. Oh, yeah. Our, our community is the reason that we come back every year. Yeah. And, you know, you just, you know, I, I, I read it. I don't, I don't know if it's a King quote, but it certainly was in a King book. He said, don't shit where you eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that became a really good motto, you know, oh, in yeah. life don't shit where you eat, yeah. you know. And so you don't take advantage of, of the community that supports and believes in you oh, yeah. so much. So to do you guys a disservice is ultimately to commit business suicide mm -hmm. for us. So we're very aware of that. And so, no, we, we, as, as long as we can continue to book the Long Beach Convention Center for the foreseeable future, we are in Long Beach. Awesome. If we had to move, we would move from oh, yeah. Long Beach. Cause not honestly, even in Southern California. We're here in Southern California. Oh yeah, but there are other venues yeah. that would love to have us. Yeah, yeah. So and, and we look at that. You have to look at that every year. Yeah. You have to assess and discuss, and we do. Um, but the first choice right now is always Long Beach for us. Yeah, and Long Beach for us is, is not even a bad drive at all. It's yeah. literally like up the freeway. You know, well, it's so, close. You know, it's yeah. fairly close for those living in San Diego area. It's close for those that are you know in OC, even the IE. Um, LA, you know, you're right. It's funny because you always think of Long Beach to me, at least for me, I always think of Long Beach as being part of Orange County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it just feels like OC to me. Yeah. It, it, but it's LA, LA. Yeah. you know. Um, but I'm way up. I'm on the other side of Universal, and to me, that's LA. Yeah. You know, yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah. And so when I come all the way out to the water, I'm thinking, well, I'm in Orange County, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But no, but it, it, but it is close to everything. It's close to the Long Beach Airport. It's, it's not too long of a drive if there's no traffic. Uh, to LAX, <laughs> um, it's fairly close to Ontario. You just pop right down the free. So I mean, Long Beach is a good lo location. No, but it's then a great location. Other venues are also in oh, Southern yeah, California good but locations. But, but Long Beach is great. I, I think Long Beach has a special place in my heart because that was one of like the first, like in, I would remember memories going to like comic conventions with my dad. Sure. So coming, so when I first went to Midsummer Scream, I was like, oh, it's here. Like. I have a lot of great memories here. Sure, so it's like, sure. And I'm, I'm making more great memories coming every year. This will be our third year. Great. Going to be attending uh, Midsummer Scream, and we are great. really excited. We That's just, awesome, we man. Can't wait. Well, we're glad to have you guys. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a well. Can it be July already? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Great. We got a couple. We got a couple months to get by, yeah. but it'll be there before you know it, man. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. As you guys were creating this event, yeah. did you guys imagine that it's going to be getting to that thirty thousand, forty thousand mark in its fifth year? 
So, you know, we, we, we kind of plan our trajectory on what we found the first three years with Scaraway. Okay. And, you know, the first year we were at the reef, the second year we were at the reef, and by the second year we'd known that we had already grown, outgrown the reef. And we were growing in leaps and bounds as far as conventions go. And so we then moved to Pasadena, and we could tell already that we were going to outgrow Pasadena. I just, in one year, we were like, it's going to get crowded in here mm -hmm. really fast. Uh, so we broke away from, from I'll put it nicely, we broke away from Scarolay and created Midsummer Scream. We only had about three months to decide, yes, we're going to do it, what are we going to call it, and we're going to execute and open doors. We had about three or four months. Wow. Which is insane. Yeah. It, absolute insanity. And by all means, we should have just, it should have been a crash and burn, mm -hmm. right? And it wasn't. And we had like 8,000 people, I think it was, like the first year. Mm -hmm. And so we've noticed that the growth every year after that has been between five and 7,000 people a year. And it hasn't slowed down. Yeah. So it haven't, hasn't slowed down. So this year we're planning on about 40,000 to show That's up. That's amazing. And uh, we just kind of see where we go from there. But uh, the growth is something that um, we learned early on, and it hasn't. Like we haven't hit a year where it's been like, well, we're expecting to have seven thousand people, and oh, it's the same number, or oh, only a thousand more people came. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's a lot because people that come, they're coming back, and they're bringing their friends. Yes. So it really continues to grow every year, mm -hmm. and forty thousand is a big number. But for other conventions that are big, like a Comic-Con or whatever, or a D23, mm -hmm. that's still a relatively small number. Oh, yeah. You know, them, so yeah. there is absolutely room yeah. to grow. And I think we will oh, continue yeah, definitely. to grow. And, uh, yeah, and we will deal with the larger numbers as they come. And uh, we will grow with that. And we embrace that. As long as we, we never want it to become something that doesn't feel special yeah right there does come a point where you become so large and the beast is so big that suddenly it's not recognizable to people that have been there since the beginning yeah right the thing that i think is is wonderful about midsummer is there is that intangible something in the air that's just electric everyone's in a good mood everyone is showing love to one another and it like i said it's homecoming oh yeah right that party on Saturday night, everybody is having such a good time yep. because they're just hanging with other spooky kids, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I think to a certain degree, a vast majority of us, myself included, that are into this kind of thing, kind of were little... There have been moments in our life where we've been outcasts and kind of like the island of misfit toys, you know? And so when you all come together at Midsummer Scream, then suddenly... You're there with, you know, 39,999, you know, yep. like-minded people that dress like you, that look like you, that you're are, there, are there excited your, about you. You're there right? with your familia, man. You are. Yes. So it, 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 there comes a threshold that if you get too big and you don't keep your identity and your focus of what you are and, more importantly, who you're serving, you lose that. You yeah. lose your identity. And we, we will never do that. Definitely. We will never do that. I mean, and I think that's why I love this convention year after year. It's just, you like you said, people are there to just have fun and just, it's a positive time. And it's fun. With, with what's, what's going on in the world right now, it's like, this is something huh. that we need. Yeah. And I know you're a big part of what's going on. Yeah, because well, yeah. I, I follow you on Instagram yeah. and I'm with you 100%. Yeah. And with what's going on in the world, this is the positive that we need to get rid of all the negativity that's going yeah, on in the world. It's just because yeah. there's so much going on in the world that, you know, you just need to take a break from all that and just enjoy something else. You know what I mean? Just Last year during good. Midsummer, there was um, a really horrific shooting. Yeah. And there was just a lot of just really horrible shit going on literally that weekend. Mm -hmm. And in our closing remarks, because we always open the show and we close the show as the team yeah. up on the main stage. And uh, that's a very important moment to us. Um, and I just said something to the effect of, you know, with all the stuff that's going on out in the world, it's really important to remember that the real monsters are out there. Yep. And in here, this is love. Yep. This yeah. is this is reality. I remember hearing that speech yeah, at the end of, that was you know, like, I think it was at the uh, Nazi. Horror Nights. Horror Nights. Night. Night. Whichever one was, one was yeah. the, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I believe that. I mean, the world is, without getting into 
everything. The, the world is at a really ugly place yes, right now. It really is. You know? And uh, I think it is important, even more so now, to have something like Midsummer, where it doesn't matter... It doesn't matter which way you sway at the polling station. When you come together as Midsummer, you're there as family. Yep. If you leave the politics at the door, we are all similar. We're all the same. Oh yeah. And and I think that that's what is very important and very special mm -hmm. is is that everybody feels that love. Yes. When we're together. Very very soon, too fast, we return then to the to the real world. You know. Yeah. But uh, as long as we can have that weekend where we can just yeah. leave it all outside. It's like a breath in. of fresh air. Really. Yeah. It, it really, really is. is. Yeah. It's very it's very positive, and I just love. Meeting with everybody, everybody has a smile on their face. Yeah, everybody's happy to be there. Yeah, um, and I'm pretty sure that makes you guys feel good too because oh, yeah. you guys are doing yeah. an amazing. You guys are putting on this amazing event, and everybody's coming just to have a good time and yeah. get rid of it. Rick, before we leave and we sign off, we got to ask one last yeah, of course. question that we ask all of our guests. Okay, and that is, what is your favorite horror movie? Wow, my favorite horror movie of all time, hands down. Is Carpenter's Halloween? Okay, that, you were, you oh, were without it. Oh, dude, without a doubt, that is like that's it. <laughs> you were probably the fastest response of any guest we've ever. Oh had no, that that's show. that's Carpenter's Halloween all the way, yep. and um, uh, loved it. You know, from from sitting watching with my grandparents and Redlands as a little kid on HBO, to you know, the new franchise, the new that I, I love the, the new. Oh, dude, Blumhouse. I I love I love the new vision oh, of yeah. it. And I'm really hoping that the the next two are, are good. Yeah. Um, Carpenter's music is back. Too. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I love that. I mean, how can you not? Everything yeah. from the shape to the music that we all love and know. Um, that's it, hands down. Um, Another one of my favorite yeah. Carpenter classics I just watched recently, and I so mad I never watched it before was uh, They Live. Okay, yeah. I just. Oh, I, it's been a minute since I've seen I that. Loved, so. I loved Roddy Piper in that movie. I, I'm a wrestling fan, okay. so Roddy Piper, it's like seeing him on there, it's like, sure. oh, dude, he's kicking ass with this. This is of great. Course, he's yeah. just doing him, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so there, you know, Halloween, and then of course there's just the usual suspects. And I will also throw Jaws in with that. Jaws is great. Right. Because you know what? As a kid growing up, who, when I was a teenager, went a lot to the beach because uh you know after growing up in the ie with my grandparents as an as a young teen i moved then with my mom to orange county yeah. and uh we spent you know all the time we were at the at the beach in laguna and newport and all that and oh man there you, you get into the water and there's always one asshole kid going dun 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 yeah dun, dun. you know it's like oh and that has like scarred our psyche yeah. you know that movie, even though it's an adventure film, you know, yeah. it's how they deem it, that is like the scariest shit ever, oh, right? Heck like, yeah. you go into a swimming pool and somebody goes, da 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 da, you're like, okay, not funny, yeah, type yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. So I would put Jaws up there, too. Uh, yeah, that that's that's a hardcore scary it, ass movie. It's funny you bring that up because my dad and my, 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 um, my mom's husband, they're the same way. They're like, you guys may think that's not scary. But when we were kids, oh, going in the deep dude. end of the pool was the scariest. Yes. Even getting in the damn bathtub was scary oh, for us. Yeah. And it yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. you guys have all this social media and you know, technology, but back in the day, that scared the shit out oh, of us. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it still scares me just to go into the regular ocean. I'm just like, yeah. I don't want to go yeah. in there. You're like, nope, Josh is in there. Yeah. 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 Bruce I'm the good. Shark is in there. I'm, I'm good. good. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. But uh, horror film, though, if we're going to peg it, a horror film, it's got to be Halloween. Halloween. All the way. Classic. You bet. Yep. Well, Midsummer Screen 2020 tickets are on sale now. Be sure to get yours because you don't want to miss it. July 31st to August 2nd. Uh, three days this week with, of course, the Friday preview night. And, of course, Saturday and Sunday with all your amazing panels, uh, show floor, Hall of Shadow. Or, mm, yeah, yeah, Hall of Shadow. So right, right? There it is. Um, Brick West, we very much thank you for being on the show thank today. Thank you. Thank and you so much. Again, thank you for, the, of course, the two gold bats you gave away. Dude, that of course. Awesome. That was Alicia, the, right? Alicia's Alicia. coming with the gold Alicia bat. Alicia is Alicia coming Trump with the gold, gold bat. bat. That's so, right. Um, uh, we can't wait to see you at the convention. Awesome, can't wait man. to see you around to probably other conventions before the midsummer. Yep. And, yep. Uh, we'll be around. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you, guys. <clears throat>